Hi, in this video we're going to look at the overview of what we're going to do in the first part of this course. So this is C Sharp Level 1 and our first activities. So here's the goals that I want you to learn or accomplish before we're done here. We're going to install Visual Studio. We're going to review what C Sharp looks like and what it's used for. We're going to create a simple console application and then also a Windows application and then we'll program some button click events. So this part of the course will give you the first introduction to creating applications that will run on Windows. So we're going to install Visual Studio, which is Microsoft's premier tool for software development. And so we'll look at some of the pieces that are around the edges of the window and a rather complex interface, but with experience, you'll get to feel very comfortable here. So here's some of the pieces that you're going to be working with. You're going to see a toolbar, a menu bar, of course. We're going to be working with a form designer only for Windows applications. So we're going to see two, two different kinds of apps, some that run just in the console and some that have buttons and menus and more graphical user interface look. We're going to be looking at the properties window all the time and then also an important section called the Project Explorer where all the pieces of our application are put together. And so refer back to this page if you kind of get lost on where some of these things are. But this will become very familiar to you and you will be comfortable using Visual Studio by the time you're done with this course. So let's also talk about Visual Studio and the options that you may have seen of when you try to install it. So first of all, Visual Studio runs on Windows. There is a version of Visual Studio that will work on a Macintosh. However, for this course, you're going to need Windows to make it work. The version for Macintosh will develop certain kinds of software, but not the kinds that we're going to be working with here. The kinds of applications that you will see are designed to run on Microsoft Windows. And so the version of Visual Studio on Macintosh will allow you to create web applications, but not Windows applications. So the target environment we're looking at is Windows. So there are several ways that you can install Windows on a Macintosh computer. Yes, you can have both running at the same time, your Macintosh environment and a Windows environment. The uh, program that you need to do that is one of these choices here. So you can use Parallels, which is my personal preference, or you can use VMware, or there is an option called Boot Camp, which uh, requires you to split your hard drive and dedicate a portion of it to Windows. The other choice that I did not put here is called VirtualBox. So VirtualBox is free and Boot Camp is free. The first two choices here, Parallels and VMware, are not free. So I think I spend about $39 a year to use Parallels because I am an educator. And if you're a student, you can also qualify for that price. So, but if you have a standard computer, like maybe 80% of the people on the planet, then you probably already have Windows installed. Also, when it comes to choosing what to install, you're going to face this question. Should I use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code? So they're both by Microsoft. They have a very similar name, but they are different programs. So you're looking for Visual Studio for this course. Visual Studio is more fully featured. It takes more memory as well, and it might not run as quickly. But for the types of applications we're going to be building, it's the only solution really we have. So Visual Studio Code is more of a text editor. So it is very lightweight, so it launches quickly, requires a little bit of RAM, and it's good if you're building things like in JavaScript or HTML. So those that are doing React and Angular and Vue, those kind of people, are probably going to go to Visual Studio Code. So there is a stronger overlap all the time between what these two will actually accomplish, but for the exercises that you're going to see here, you need Visual Studio. So C Sharp is a personal preference of mine. It's uh, easy to learn for beginners, but yet it is super powerful and can extend to even a full career as a professional developer. So C Sharp is Microsoft's invention from the year 2000 or so, and it has the distinction of allowing beginning programmers to create graphical user interface applications, which is exactly what you'll see in this course. You can do that within minutes of learning how to program. And so it's a great way to see your results in a quick manner. C Sharp is part of a family of C-like languages. So C is the grandfather, you might say. C++ came later, 
And then we have two descendants that are very similar. These are siblings, Java and C Sharp. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you were to look at a lot of enterprise applications that are in the business world today or in corporations, you're going to find that both of these are a very popular choice. They're very similar in the fact that they are somewhat compiled languages. They are byte code interpreted languages, which we'll talk about in a future lesson. But this means that you can run the applications on multiple platforms. So write it once and run it anywhere is the philosophy. So you can run this on a server that has the Linux operating system or a Windows operating system equally well. And of course, those are the two choices that most people have when it comes to deploying web applications. So right now we're in the C-sharp world that is Windows only for desktop applications. But if you learn one, you'll probably be able to transfer a lot of the knowledge to the other language. So if you're a Java programmer, you're going to see a lot of similarities to C Sharp. And if this is your first experience with programming in C Sharp, then you can be confident that you could also transfer what you know to learning Java, maybe at a future date. So I'll have courses on Java as well as C Sharp. Now C Sharp keeps developing and Microsoft keeps promoting it in different ways. In the, in the past few years, Microsoft has moved toward an open source mentality which means that you can take your C-sharp application and run it on cross-platform solutions. So in the past, you could only run an application in C-sharp on a Windows computer. So you would have a Windows server deploy your applications. Now it's more open source, so getting more like Java every day in that, in that manner. Now let's talk about jobs. Uh, one purpose that you might have in taking this course is getting employed. And there's good news because C Sharp is certainly a choice for many, many corporations and the people that are likely to hire you. So go to Indeed or Glassdoor or your favorite job website and search for C Sharp Developer. Or another key term might be ASP.NET, which is a form of C Sharp applications. Search for those key terms and see how many results come up in your community, see what they pay see who the businesses are so that way you can get an idea of who is interested in your skills then compare that to other languages such as search for python or java or other languages that are maybe emerging and you'll get an idea of what the demand is for you in your circumstances so in my personal circumstance it seems like c sharp and java are both good choices for people that are developing full stack applications and enterprise level programming. So you're in good, this is a good start. It's not the only pathway to becoming a software developer, but it's a good one. So C Sharp is a good choice for a beginning programmer who has a future as a software developer. Now let's talk about some of the programs that we're going to create in this unit. So the first application is going to be very simple. It's going to print out hello world, and uh, this will just verify whether you have the application Visual Studio set up correctly and you'll be successful in running a very simple app. Then we're going to create a console app, which as you can see here, doesn't look very pretty, but it allows you to see how the code is going to affect your, your operations. You know, like this is going to be a calculator, which will allow you to add and subtract and multiply numbers. And the purpose is just to see what C Sharp code looks like and give you a feel of what programming languages can do. And so this will be a very simple app. We're going to actually just copy some code and make it work and to give you a familiarization of what programming is. Then we're going to create our first Windows applications. And so this type of Windows app is called a WinForms app. And it's the simplest of the Windows Forms applications that you can make. There are other types that look similar, but this is a great way to get started. It's the traditional Windows application that you've probably seen, such as your calculator or Excel or Word or other programs that run only on your desktop. So these are not internet applications. These are local applications that uh, you would use as a personal PC user. So those are some of the things that were uh, right ahead of us. You're, now you understand a little bit about the Visual Studio and the language C Sharp and a few of the applications that were about ready to program. So let's move on and get started with our first application.